Minecraft 12. Let's continue and jump into question five. Oh, here we go. Microsoft Excel. So they want us to open the spreadsheet and we can see we've already got a picture here. So we can see we're going to have to do something with that. We've got a workbook sheet, one volunteers and list. Okay, let's see what they want us to do. So we're going to work through this nice and slowly. We've got about 22 marks. So bear the following in mind. Now, if you've been moving through this paper the way I have, you actually have time on your hands. Okay. Um, so let's just see what we're going to be doing here. Sheet one worksheet. So remember 22 marks, it should be 22 minutes, but we're going to see if we can do this in about 10, 15 minutes. It shouldn't be an issue. We're going to rename sheet one to animals. So right click, rename animals, done. Change the tab color to red. And you see where I save time here, I can use it elsewhere. Apply a yellow shading to the cell range A1 to G1. Okay. Sort the data according to animal name. So we want to take all this data. And we're going to go home. We're going to go sort and filter. We're going to go with a custom sort. We're going to sort it based on animal name. And in descending order, done. That's already five marks. Use a feature to fill all the cells in column B. Um, to fill all the cells in, in column B of all animals that have been admitted to the shelter before 2022 in blue. Okay, so what does that sound like? That sounds like conditional formatting. Okay, so I'm just going to highlight my cells. I'm going to go to conditional formatting, highlight cell rules, and let's go with less than. And they say in here, animals that have been admitted before 2022. So there we go, before 2022. And let's just change the date. Let's make it 2022, 0101. We're going to highlight all the dates before the 1st of January 2022, and they want that in blue. So, they want that blue. Okay, and there we go. Um, next, create a drop down list for column C using the list items on the list worksheet. So that's what they want. And we need to go create a drop down list. So, right, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to go to data, data validation, allow, and I'm going to change that to list. Okay, then I need to specify the source. So I'm going to go to list, I'm going to highlight that, hit enter, click OK. And now, whenever somebody clicks over there, they have options to choose from. Okay, so that's my list. Okay, so question 5.7 says create a unique pet ID um, for each animal in column F consisting of the first three letters. Now, in other words, we need to concatenate. But we need to concatenate a few things. So concatenate. And um, what do I need to concatenate? Well, I want to take the first three letters of that animal name. So I'm going to have to go left Click on that three because I'm saying I want to concatenate the first three letters of whatever's in that cell. And I want to concatenate that with rand between one and 200 because I want a random number between one and 200. So I want to take what I'm generating there, add it to those first three letters. That will then give me my unique ID, I'm just going to pull it all the way down. And there we go. 
Okay, so for 5.8, they want me to calculate the age of each animal in years, ensure the age is rounded off to the nearest whole number. So let's just get today's date. And we want to subtract it. Now, already when I look at this, 2015 to 2024, that's around nine years, and it's almost the end of the year. So it should be you know, close to 10 years, but it's like nine comma something. I already know that offhand. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take today's date. I'm going to subtract that from this date of birth. And that's what it's going to give me. Okay. What I've then got to do is I'm going to pop in brackets here. And I'm going to take whatever that answer is and divide it by 365,25 and close my brackets. Why 365,25? Because that's the number of days in a year. Okay, now bear in mind, my format is still in date. I'm going to change that over to number. And there we go, 9,85 years. And they want that rounded off to the nearest whole number. And there's my answer. Okay, so I'm going to zoom into this and just open this and show you there is my formula. All right, now I can pull that down as well. And we should be good to go. There we go. Right, 5.9, this is in a different worksheet, volunteers. They want me to create a 2D clustered column chart using the data in cell range J1 to K7. J1 through to K7, insert uh, a chart, and I can go to, what type of chart do they want? A 2D clustered column, 2D clustered column, right. Um, then what do they want me to do? Move the chart to a new sheet. So I'm going to cut that, open, and just paste that anywhere. Okay. So we can get a nice view of that. Right. So that's two marks. Ensure the title of the chart uh, reads number of volunteers uh, area. So that's done. Change the chart style to nine. Here we go. And fill the bars of the graph with the image smiley face. Okay. So let us fill it with a picture from file. And we're going to navigate through to smiley face okay uh, ensure the image is stacked so that not so that one smiley face represents five volunteers all we really have to do is click on that go to our full because remember we filled that with an image and we're going to go stack and there we go over the page we actually get a picture of what that should look like and that seems to be on track okay so that's three marks done and that is our 22 marks from question five right learners we are now in question number six so let's open this and we're still in excel this is worth 23 marks and there are, there are really just six questions one two three four, five, and six. So let's have a look. The first one says, calculate the total amount of donations received in cell C3. Okay, and it's really just going to be an equals sum. A sum of what? A sum of all these donations. Done. Okay. Next one says, if a donor is also a volunteer, so there we see donor surname, donor name, volunteer, yes and no. So if they are a volunteer, this, this is indicated with letter Y for yes in column C, that's where we are. Calculate the total number of donors who are also volunteers. So you're a donor and a volunteer. So what does that mean? We're going to go and do a count if. I'm going to open that up, and this is going to be my range. 
and we literally just want to count the number of yeses. Oops, I just want to see where am I putting that? Sorry, over there. Insert function count if that is the range and I'm counting the number of yeses. Here we go. I'm going to do exactly the same to count the number of folks or number of donors who are not volunteers. Why am I doing that? Not only because the question asked, but because there they wanted me to copy that down. So let's just make sure, let's just make sure that one is correct. It's fine. Okay. So there we go. So you could see I just needed to make that one change. I actually just want to take that out. Get the same answer. Good. Happy with that. Moving on. Instead of functioning cell C8, so this one, to calculate the total amount of donations received, so the total amount by all donors who are also volunteers. So that means I'm going to do a sum if. And I'm going to sum if what? What is my what is what is my range going to be? We want to see if the folks are donors. Right? That's the range. The criteria is yes, they are donors. And then what am I going to add up? These totals over here if it matches up. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. There we are. And click OK. And there we go. So copy this. Let's see. Yeah. And they want us to format this to accounting. There it is. Accounting. Done. Can you believe that that's five marks? Can you believe that that's five marks? Okay. Next one wants us to work out the tax amount in cell F11. That's where I am that the donors will receive, okay, which is 25% of their donation. So it's going to be 25% of this amount. And that's it. Do you want me to copy it down all the way? And that is going to be their tax amount. Sorted. Okay, that's like three marks. So I just want to read that again. Calculate the tax amount that the donors will receive, which is 25% of their donations based in column E. Copy this down to all the cells. Done. Um, if a donor, 6.5, if a donor's contribution in column E exceeds 1,500, they are associated with a company. Insert a function into cell G11 to indicate whether a donor is linked to a company or not. Display company for donations exceeding 1.5 and individuals individual for amounts below. So they basically want me to use an if statement. So I can go and I can go to my insert function if and if what? What is what is my criteria? If whatever's in this cell is greater than 1,500, what must happen? They say display company for donations exceeding that. So it must display the name Com company, company. And it must display the word individual if it is less than that. And you can see already I've got company. So I'm going to go OK. <clears throat> but let's just make sure we can copy this down. We don't have any issues. Right, and there we go. So let's have a look at two or three of them. This one exceeds. This one is less. This one exceeds, exceeds. Beautiful. Okay, and that's four marks. Now for 6.6, .6, they asked us the following. They say all donors will receive a gift based on their donation amount. So there's their donation amount. They want to put a gift in here. The amount and gifts are stored in the gifts worksheet. So you can see now, we've got an issue here, because 
we're dealing with ranges between 0 and 500, between 500 and 1,000. Okay, so that immediately yeah, says something to me, but okay. Instead of function, it's H11 to display which gift each donor will receive and then copy that down to all the cells. So this tells me we're looking at a VLOOKUP. And my lookup value is going to be the amount, as they said. My table array is in the gifts worksheet, and I'm going to highlight that whole area. And then my column index, I want to take the amount and match it up to a gift. So I want to put in number two. Now, usually, I would just say false, and I would click OK, and that would be fine, but it's not working in this case. Why? because I'm dealing with these ranges. It's not exact amounts. If it's exact amounts, I leave it as false. In this case, I'm going to go in and I'm going to change false to true. True. Hit enter, and there we go. I've got my answer. However, when I copy this down, and this is why they said you must copy it down, do you see the errors I'm getting? Okay, let's see why. If I look at the first one, a2 to B12, that is the range. When I go to the next one, it's changed, etc. So I need to go back into my formula and I need to make that range or add to that range absolute referencing. The reason for that is when I copy this down, do you see? That range does not change. So I need to make sure that in my formula, the reference to that range doesn't change as well. And I'm going to copy it all the way down. There we go. There's my answer. I've got everything. Guys, that's 23 marks done in probably less than 10 minutes. Okay, so do you see what I did? Read through the question, try to work out what they're asking me to do, and then I implement what I know. Right, now we're looking at question number seven. We've got animal stats here. And you can see we've got a subtotal worksheet. We've got all these details. So let's read what the question is asking of us. They say they want us to use the subtotal feature in Excel. So where is the subtotal feature? And let's just go over here to data. And there we go. We've got our subtotal feature um, to determine the total number of animals of each type. Now, they actually give us a picture here. And hopefully by the time you see this video, I'll have the picture um, yeah, as well, but you can have a look at it in the question paper. Ensure that there's a page break insert between the groups. So I'm going to highlight everything. I'm going to go to subtotal. And we're just going to, for five marks, just read what we want. Yeah, they say to us, ensure a page break. So a page break between the groups. Do you see that? Page break between the groups. And they want me to determine the total number of animals of each Right, so they want me to count the number of animals. We're looking at animal type, and I'm going to click OK. So now what should happen is I should have a bird count of 40 according to the question paper, cat count 36, and you can see, do you see the page breaks that come in? There we go. So what we can do, um, if you look at the picture, if I just do this, it will just give me all those totals together once I go through everything. And there you can see that matches up perfectly with the picture that I have in question seven. Mm -hmm.